Hey folks, welcome to KCD Bangalore. My name is Rahul and today I will be talking about hierarchical namespaces in Kubernetes. A bit about me, uh, I work as a software engineer at InfraCloud Technologies where I work mainly on Go Kubernetes operators and below is my uh, Twitter handle. Uh, <clears throat> before we start, uh, this is the agenda that we are going to talk about. Uh, we'll start with namespaces in Kubernetes, uh, its pros and cons. Then we will talk about hierarchical namespaces. Uh, then we will look into hierarchical namespace controller. And then finally, we will uh, perform some demo. So before we start, uh, we start looking into hierarchical namespaces. Uh, let's first see uh, the actual problem that it is trying to solve. Now imagine being a developer in an organization uh, where you have large multi-tenant Kubernetes clusters up and running. You and your team are confined to work within a set of resources. For example, namespaces provided to you by your cluster administrator. Teams generally work best uh, if they can operate autonomously. Uh, but since uh, namespace creation is a highly privileged task, it's unlikely that any member of development team is allowed to uh, create a new namespace. So now this means that whenever a team wants a new namespace, uh, they must trace a ticket to the cluster administrator. And this may cause a delay in the development cycles. Uh, here I have created a new uh, user uh, name is dev user and I am into uh, dev user context. Uh, this user does not have sufficient permissions uh, to create a new namespace. So if I now try to create a new namespace, say team DB, uh, it throws an error. Uh, so uh, the team or any user is now not allowed to create a new namespace and has to go through a complete administrative process to, you know, uh, uh, get a new namespace created by the cluster administrator. Uh, now let's talk about uh, namespaces in Kubernetes. Uh, mod. So uh, as you all know, uh, modern applications are increasingly adopting the principle of microservice based architecture in their design and development phases. An application is broken down into a number of smaller modules or, or services. Uh, and are often developed and owned by you know different teams altogether. In effect, uh, this approach introduces the need for micromodularity, uh, wherein logical and isolated units of resources are created for microservices to be deployed in. <clears throat> A namespace in Kubernetes is a natural choice to provide the needed resource isolation, and hence it is widely used to deploy a microservice-based architecture on Kubernetes clusters. So namespaces have two key properties. Uh, the first is they are used to represent ownership. So most Kubernetes objects such as pods deployments must be in a namespace. So if you use namespace to represent ownership, you can always count on there being an owner. Secondly, as I previously talked about, namespaces have authorized creation and use. Only high privileged users can create namespaces. And other users, uh, let's say developers, uh, require explicit permissions to use those namespaces. However, uh, sometimes namespaces are not flexible enough to you know, meet some common use cases. Uh, for example, let's say that one team owns several microservices. Ideally, uh, ideally they should place uh, these microservices into different namespaces uh, in order to isolate them from each other. You know, but this uh, presents two problems. Uh, firstly, these namespaces have no common concept of concept of ownership, uh, even though they are uh, they are both owned by the same team. Right. This means that if the team controls multiple namespaces, not only does Kubernetes uh, not have any record of common owner, but names uh, namespace scope policies uh, cannot be applied uniformly across them. For example, let's say if I want to apply a network policy to all the namespaces that a team owns, I have to apply manually one by one. Right. And secondly, as I said, develop, development teams cannot create namespaces on their own. Hence, uh, 
with the proliferation of Kubernetes instances as units of uh, resource and identity isolation for microservices to be deployed in, a mechanism is needed to simplify their uh, management. Uh, this is where uh, hierarchical namespaces uh, comes into play. So hierarchical namespaces are a new concept uh, developed developed by the uh, Kubernetes working group, uh, uh, say multi-tenancy, uh, in order to solve uh, the problems that I mentioned uh, before. Uh, so in its simplest form, a hierarchical namespace is a regular Kubernetes namespace that contains a small custom resource that identifies a single optional parent namespace. So this now establishes the concept of ownership across namespaces, not just within them. So basically hierarchical namespaces uh, allows users to you know, organize namespaces into trees uh, and apply policies to an entire tree or a subtree. A, a, a policy object uh, applied in a root namespace or a parent namespace of a tree or a subtree is replicated and applied to the old child namespaces automatically. Uh, it on, also introduces the concept of a sub namespace uh, as a child of another namespace with its life cycle bound to that of its parent. So now instead of cluster level permissions, users would only need narrow permissions in the parent namespace to create sub namespaces. Any namespace that isn't a sub namespace is a full namespace, which is nothing but traditional Kubernetes namespace. Uh, so uh, creating full namespaces uh, requires, as I previously said, it requires cluster level privileges, right? Uh, and that need to be closely guarded uh, by the cluster administrator. To allow individual teams uh, some flexibility to create their own namespaces, uh, deploy workloads uh, in, the, in that namespaces, the sub namespace feature can be utilized. Creating sub namespace only requires a relatively narrow set of privileges that can be uh, uh, given to individual teams in an organization. So uh, coming to the hierarchical namespace controller, um, hierarchical namespace controller, uh, basically HNC is a Kubernetes controller that manages these hierarchical namespaces. Uh, so HNC mainly uh, uh, reconciles three type of uh, CRDs. Uh, the first is HNC configuration. The second is hierarchy configuration. And the third is sub namespace anchor. So uh, this is the HNC configuration. Uh, this is a single, you know, non-namespaced object uh, which is named as config. You know, it, it defines the behavior of the entire cluster. Uh, it should be uh, modifiable only by the cluster administrators. Uh, it basically contains information about what Kubernetes objects we want to propagate down the hierarchy. By default, uh, HNC enforces roles and role bindings are back resources to a propagate mode by default. So this basically means that uh, all the roles and role bindings that are present in the parent namespace will automatically be uh, provided uh, or copied to the in the child namespaces. To propagate any other Kubernetes objects uh, or resources down the hierarchy, we need to update the spec of HNC configuration object. So as you see in this uh, example, I have edited the spec of HNC configuration uh, to include, to propagate network policies uh, down the hierarchy. So this means that uh, any network policy that I now apply to the, uh, in the parent namespace will also be copied to each child namespace of that uh, parent namespace. Uh, the second is, uh, a hierarchy configuration. So uh, there's either zero or one of these present in each namespace with the name hierarchy. I mean, if it is, if it exists, uh, this object mainly defines the child parent relationship between namespaces. So as you can see here for the namespace IPERFC1, its parent is slice HNC3 and its childrens are IPERFC1 child. The third is, uh, sub namespace anchor. These are uh, used to create the actual sub namespaces uh, we discussed earlier, right? So generally speaking, access to create or read these objects should be granted quite freely to users uh, to have permissions to use these objects in a given namespace. 
since this allows them to use hierarchical namespaces to organize uh, you know their objects uh this uh, note that the sub namespace anchor for a children namespace is present in its parent namespace yes so let's now uh, quickly uh, look at uh, some hands on demo so um, the hierarchical namespaces are provided by a kubernetes controller which is known as a hierarchical namespace controller or hnc the so basically hnc consists of two components uh, the first is a manager that runs on your cluster uh, it manages sub namespaces uh, propagate policy objects uh, the second is uh, the kubectl plugin uh, which is known as kubectl hns which makes it easy for users to interact with the manager so i have already installed the both of them uh, so if you see in a chain system namespace the uh, manager is installed uh, and i have also in installed the kubectl uh, plugin kubectl hns <clears throat> so let's now uh, move to this developer context uh, so this eventually so this represents the uh, uh, developer uh, so if i try if i now try to create a new namespace let's say team db uh, i'm sorry cr as you can see <clears throat> Uh, the developer uh, user is not allowed to create a namespace. So what I have done over here is uh, I have created a new role uh, for this uh, developer and I have given sufficient permission for it to interact with the HNC CRDs and I also created the corresponding role binding. Okay, and I've already applied it. So if I now try to create a new sub namespace, let's say KHNS create SVC one team A team A under the parent namespace development. So it says that uh, SVC team A sub namespace anchor is created successfully in the parent namespace. So if I do KHNS three development, so you can see. Uh, under development namespace, uh, the sub namespace SVC team A is also created, right? So <clears throat> as I uh, described earlier, uh, by default, HNC uh, provides a role and role bindings under the uh, propagate mode, right? So this means that whatever roles and role bindings are, are present in the development namespace uh, or a parent namespace, which is development namespace over here, those will be propagated to all the child namespaces. So if I do k get roles minus n development, uh, dev role is present in the development namespace, which would also be now present in the uh, SVC one team A namespace. So right, so this is also present over here. So let's say now, uh, if I want to propagate uh, network policies also down the hierarchy, right? So let's uh, move to the uh, minikube context and Gen C configuration <clears throat> to add more uh, objects that you want to propagate down the hierarchy. You must edit this HNC configuration, uh, which is uh, uh, a cluster scope, I mean, uh, only present uh, once. Uh, so as you can see here, I I've already edited the uh, HNC configuration uh, to basically propagate network policies uh, down to each child namespaces. Right. So, uh, if I now apply network policy to the development namespace, uh, so uh, this is the network policy I'm going to apply in the development namespace. So k apply hyphen f dev user netpol 
in development linkages <clears throat> so as you can see here uh, it is created uh, so if i now do k get netfall minus n development linkages it is created so this network policy now should also be present in the child instance that is SVC team A. So if I do uh, this, as you can see, uh, it is also present in the child instance. So if I now do K describe this network policy, uh, netfall uh, minus uh, N SVC team. So the HNC controller also adds uh, some labels over the propagated objects. So as you can see, it, it has added inherited form label uh, from the development namespace, which is a present namespace, uh, which is a parent namespace, right? So uh, you can also, uh, I mean, perform uh, many tasks uh, using hierarchical namespaces. Um, Yes, so that is what all all that is what uh, I have for the hierarchical namespace. In the end, uh, I would like to thank uh, Adrian, uh, who is the team lead and who created this project known as a hierarchical namespace for uh, uh, helping me and uh, reviewing the content for this uh, uh, presentation. Uh, you can also follow. Uh, the hierarchical namespace project uh, under Kubernetes 6 and maybe try to contribute it. Uh, thank you.